Hi, and welcome to another episode of Inspiring Business. My name is Mark Bullock. I'm the co-founder of phoneblogger.net, videosocials.net, and video interview podcast services, where we facilitate marketing services and systems for professional service firms, including attorneys, financial professionals, coaches, and consultants. Every episode, I interview business thought leaders who make a difference in the world through their services, their products, or their ideas. You can find the show on YouTube, LinkedIn, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, Stitcher, Spotify, and more. Today, I'm very excited because my guest is Debbie Harris, who is the co-founder of Main Street Weight Loss. Welcome, Debbie. Thank you, Mark. I'm very, very excited to be here. Terrific. So we've worked together for, you know, full disclosure, we've worked together for a few years now. You've been a member of Video Socials. You've referred all kinds of clients to us uh, for Video Socials. And I've gotten to know you and, and your various businesses that you've been working with over the last almost three years now. And uh, one of the things that you've gotten into a, a little bit more recently is this Main Street uh, weight loss. And I, I, you know, I had a few questions, if you don't mind, about it and, and how it works and, and, sure. and et cetera. And so the first is, you know, what makes your weight loss program so different from everything else that's out there? Well, that's a great question, Mark, because there are about a million different things out there, as there always are. Uh, what makes this program different? We, we call it uh, real food, real support, real lasting results. So we're not really looking for the person who says, I've got to drop those 10 pounds to get into that little black dress or that suit or whatever it is. We're really looking for the person who's looking for long term um, to get to their ideal weight, to feel good, to get healthier, and then never have to deal with the subject of dieting again. And we do that by real food. There's no food supplements or uh, there's no food substitutions. Real support. Every day with me, we have a WhatsApp group. There's a huge Facebook group that's nationwide. And then we teach you how you never gain it back. Hmm. That's awesome. And, and have you dealt with you know, weight challenges yourself? I mean, where, where, where does this oh. come from? Uh, let's see. I think I was nine. So um, the, I was the fat kid up until the sixth grade or so. And then I went on Weight Watchers with my mom. So I was about 11 or 12, um, dropped the weight and then went to visit my dad in California and put it all back on. So I basically dealt with this issue for, I hate to say it, but over half a century, <laughs> I say it like that. And it's a real personal quest for me. I mean, I have tried everything. I have spent a fortune. I have lost weight, kept it off, then gained it back, then lost it again. After menopause, it was virtually impossible. Um, and men and women, we help. I just couldn't get it to move, you know, keto, paleo. I mean, whatever. Um, nothing really centered me, got me to where I wanted to be. And then now, a year and a half later, the weight is off. I'm able to live my life. I eat food. I go out and have cocktails. Um, so for me, I understand that personal journey, and I really want to help as many people as I can. So I basically can completely identify, uh, as, as a matter of fact, I had weight loss surgery now almost 20 years ago. <laughs> Um, and it's been basically since I was a, since I was a kid, you know, I was a I was a chubby, yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah. and and uh, and then and then also you know through high school I, I I did a lot of sports and 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 honestly I think that made it worse because I was able to get down. I was wrestling, I was weightlifting, I was playing sports, I was eating massive quantities of calories to be able to right. um, to, to to maintain that and. Uh, and then military and et, et cetera, et cetera. And it, it's just, I had all these yo-yo effects that were happening, you know, into, into my twenties. Um, and, and then ultimately uh, just got in really bad habits, you know, for, 
as far as what I was eating and, 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 and then not having that level of exercise right. you know, anymore. So I, I know that, um, anyway, so I, I made the choice, you know, 20 years ago to have weight loss surgery and, and I did lose a lot of weight. Um, and I've been yo-yoing since, uh, to, uh, to some degree, I'm at the highest that, um, that I've been in several years now and I'm not happy about it. And I know what I need to do. I, I know what I need to do to, to, to get back down. And part of that may very well be uh, taking a serious look at your program, but um, what do people who don't, I don't have a whole lot that I want to lose though. Right. So right. And, and especially right. in comparison to where I, where I right. was before the surgery. And, um, but I know there's a lot of people that you know, maybe it's 10 or 20 pounds or something. Right. You know, it's really not that big a deal, but what about them when they don't have a whole lot to lose, but they want to get healthier and they want to get off the yo-yo? Yeah, great question. And also when you asked me earlier, um, and now that I'm, I'm listening to you about your journey, it's really the stuff up here that we spend about 75% of our time on because that's what isn't addressed in many cases, the mm. habits, the, the, the emotional eating, the, the stress eating, all of that. But to answer your question, we have many people who come to us who maybe even down to five pounds, <clears throat> five mm. pounds, 10 pounds, 15 pounds, but they have a long range goal of being healthy. Um, staying independent, uh, crawling around with their grandchildren or their children, being able to play outside. So what this does is this actually balances out hormones. And when you do that, your body will naturally get to the weight that it's most comfortable at. So mm -hmm. if it's five pounds, eight pounds, 30 pounds, 50 pounds, over a hundred pounds, it makes no difference. In the meantime, you are also getting healthier. So you're, you're eating clean, you're eating real food, but, but you know, the sugar is removed. Sorry to say everybody, but for, for a certain amount of time, the alcohol is removed. Um, we, we are giving you a balanced diet to clean out. So whether it's five pounds or 150 pounds, you're going to reach your goal. You're going to be able to stay there and understand what foods work best for you. And you're going to understand what's going on up here so that you don't get back in that situation again. So, and, and this isn't something that we really talked about, um, but something that I became very aware as I was in the three years or so that I prepared for weight loss surgery was understanding the impact of the hormones, especially yeah. yes. in, in, in my case, they called it uh, once you kind of cross the threshold to being what they called morbidly obese, in other words, it was life life threatening, right? Uh, or potentially life threatening. Um, now, this, you know, I, I say this, and at, at the time, I was my weight loss team was twelve or thirteen professionals, okay. um, and I was I had a personal trainer, and I had a dietitian, and I had et cetera, et cetera, and I had to do all that, and even even some, you know prescription level weight loss drugs, uh, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. And I had to go through all this in order to qualify for, um, you know, support. I even started a support group in the area that I was in, didn't have one. So I had to start one, et cetera. So I jumped through all kinds of hoops to even qualify to do the surgery. And I learned a lot about, it went well beyond habits. Right. And, it, and and yeah. it was very much into hormones and, the, and, mm -hmm. and how your hormones can really shift, especially as you get into that, you know, hundred pounds overweight kind of kind of area, where there basically it gets comes to, back to the point that you almost can't diet your way right um, back. Right. So, um, but again, that was twenty years ago. That was before a lot of them, you know, the technology that we have now and a lot of the knowledge that we that we have now but how does your program address things like the again you already said you know 75 percent of it is mental but i know that there's a hormonal component to it. yes yes there is and we use a trifecta approach um we have a homeopathic completely homeopathic drops that are used in the first phase it is the specific list of foods high nutrient low calorie Mm -hmm. um, and then we also have some uh, supplements or vitamins, if you will, all natural. And by all natural, I mean truly plant-based. 
um, either whether it's um, we use milk thistle because we're cleaning out the liver. So we're addressing that trifecta in addition to everything that's going on up here. Mm -hmm. And our clients actually notice within the, thir the first three or four days, sleeping better, more energy. Um, and as the weeks go on, lowering a blood pressure medication or coming off as my husband did after mm -hmm. 30 years, um, you know, coming off of uh, metformin and other blood sugar medications, uh, no headaches, uh, Crohn's disease attacks let up, even um, sleep apnea. I had one client send me her tape, how much improved it was after just the first week. So the body is naturally doing these things. So we are addressing the hormones. And when we do our informational seminars via Zoom on Monday, Mondays, we talk about these hormones. We talk about the science behind the program. Which I find that amazing because no matter what program, system, whatever that you subscribe to, and, and, and I think, you know, especially in America, but I, I guess really around the world, you know, we, we want to, you know, take a pill or, um, you know, follow a prescribed, follow a prescribed, yes. you know, um, diet program or, 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 or food program, et cetera. Um, and really what's missing, I think most of the time is really understanding what's going on inside your body and inside your brain that is causing you either to, to form and, and sustain habits that are not healthy, that are, that, that are not helping you in your goals, but also, um, you know, are triggering hormonal uh, uh, and, and chemical responses within the body that are literally fighting. Um, I, I, mm -hmm. I was, I was literally astonished. Uh, again, I had a big team and I had, I had a lot of professionals that, that were helping. Um, and, and I had no idea that what all was, was going on and, and what we put in makes a difference. Um, and, and, and when we put it in, mm -hmm. the time of day that we put it in, um, <laughs> you know, the level of, of, and I'm not talking about, you know, hardcore cardio and stuff like that, but just movement. Exactly. Um, Exactly. You know, it makes so much difference. And, and, and in my case now, I'm not getting as much movement as I want, but pretty religiously, you know, my wife and I are getting out for walks every yeah. single day, you know, walking the dogs and get, you know, and, and mm -hmm. deliberately pushing ourselves, you know, to, 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 to walk faster. The, the old concept of you, you know, use it or lose it. Right. And so, um, but I can't tell you how much better I feel. Yeah. If I do, and if it's a pouring down rainy day and I don't get on the treadmill or something like that, it's, I can literally feel it, you know, um, get that in. And you're so right. I'm so glad you said movement because one of the things that we believe in is we meet clients where they are. And it really is about movement. Um, it's not about being a gym rat. I mean, if that's what you do. But, but the thing with the hormones, as you pointed out, you can be a gym rat and you can be living on lettuce. And mm -hmm. if your hormones are out of whack, it doesn't matter. And that's why people call and say, I don't understand it. I go to the gym five days a week. I don't eat anything. Well, it's not that. Your hormones are probably out of whack. And the other thing is the amount of stress that we're all under these days um, from within our own family, work environments, certainly the last two and a half years, and then, you know, I tell people all the time, never watch the news before you go to bed. Never. That, that is a hard and fast rule. And if you're watching, like we've been watching Endeavor, if you're watching some sort of mystery or British crime drama, turn the weather channel on right before you go to bed or put on that DVR of the basketball game or whatever. But the amount of stress, so constantly raising our cortisol and the amount of stress that we're dealing with on a daily basis um, is tremendous, especially over the last few years. I mean, it's, it's like, you know, nuts. <laughs> and that adds to it. And not to change the subject, but, you know, there's also stressors, you, you know, mentioned sleep apnea. Now I had had sleep apnea when I was at my when when I was at my peak weight, 
um, actually quite a bit before I reached my peak weight and didn't know it um, and then fell asleep at the wheel and rear-ended rear somebody. And fortunately, nobody, you know, I broke a finger in my, in, in, in my hand, but that's, that was the only injury out of that, you know, thank God. Mm -hmm. um, but I had narcolepsy and didn't know it. Right. So, um, and after losing, well, I'm not going to say how much it was, it was more than a hundred pounds. Um, I, you know, the sleep apnea machine was just annoying the crap out of me at that point, whereas it, it was literally saving my life right. before. Um, and I had lost so much weight that I said, you know, my wife suggested that, well, maybe try, you know, try a night without it. And, and then, you know, one night turned into two and three and four, and it's been years now. I haven't, I haven't needed it. And, 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 and um, but the stress that, that, that the reduction of sleep that you have when you're overweight um, adds additional stress to the body because we heal, right, when we sleep. So if we're not sleeping properly, we're not going into REM. And I had the sleep studies and all that, and all that stuff. Um, it's such an educational process to understand. And if you don't know and you don't understand right. all of this stuff, if you don't have a, a, a good picture of why these things are happening and why you, you need to get everybody needs, needs different levels of sleep or different numbers of hours, et cetera, et cetera. But if you're not getting what you need and or you're going to bed with, you know, the stressors of watching the news and or right right um and or you know you're fighting with your fighting with your spouse right, you, know, right. you, you, you know um um you know those of us who are parents and grandparents you know the kids just love to do things at 11 midnight one o'clock in the morning <laughs> that that adds stress you know so uh if if you're if you're if you're not dealing with stress and you're not dealing with the hormones and you're not getting enough sleep all of those things add to essentially continuing to gain rather than being correct to, 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 you're to, absolutely right and either not losing at all <clears throat> or suddenly gaining even for people who who have never had a weight issue never right. and all of a sudden and you're absolutely right and we i talk to people now you mentioned before what if you don't have a lot of weight to lose mm -hmm. you may not have a lot of weight to lose you may still not be sleeping right Again, balancing out the hormones, getting your body to, first of all, getting rid of sugar, you know, cleaning out of sugar is such a big deal. And some, I've had one gentleman who said, you know, I'm addicted to it. I eat it every day. He was living <laughs> terrible stuff. He told me that. And by the way, he owns a, a gym and um, <laughs> great guy. <clears throat> and he said to me after the first three weeks, he said, I cannot believe he dropped 19 pounds. I cannot believe how good I feel. And I cannot believe that I have not had sugar in three weeks. I can't believe, I wouldn't have thought that I could do that. Right. Um, but your body starts to feel really good, you know? And, and it's not to say, by the way, this is not about deprivation. I wanna be clear about that. You learn over the course of our program how to add back all the foods that you like so you'll know if you want that piece of cake exactly how it's going to react and what you do to counter that doesn't mean you can never have the piece of cake it means you go into it with the knowledge of exactly what you were just talking about mark how it's going to be what the results will be and how you modify that i gotta tell you this is this is uh, this is bringing back so much of what i've learned and have set aside, and and uh, um, one of, one of my yo-yos, uh, which happened, you know, a few years ago, I, I had gotten up quite a bit and and just decided, look, I know what I need to do. I just need to cut out sugar and I need to cut out uh, snacking at night, right? So mm -hmm. that, that, those those were my two, and they are again now, uh, my my two Achilles heels, and um, I can't tell you how much better I felt and how fast. Yeah, I started feeling better. Um, yeah, and and, and uh, um, the joint pain, you know, from going on the walks and stuff like that, just disappeared. Yep. Just getting just getting sugar out. Um, yep. You know, it's it's absolutely incredible. So thank you for thank you for the reminder. <laughs> well, before I ask you our our 
our final question, which is uh, going to be how how does th how does never having to diet again, you know, fit into this? Before you answer that, um, I, I wanted to take just a moment to talk about what it is that we do with video socials and phone blogger and our VIP services, et cetera. And um, essentially the difference that we make is, is the difference of helping people do which they're not going to do on their own or they're not going to do effectively on their own or they're not going to be able to do consistently on their own. Right. And that is creating content that is going out in social media and going out in newsletters and going out in email blasts and, and, and uh, reaching out to those that they know and having those that they know pass it along to others. Um, and that is content that is educational and informational and valuable. And the content itself can make a difference for the whatever audience that they choose to reach. Now, we started more than a decade ago realizing that getting content out of our clients that we were advising as far as doing marketing advising for uh, was the challenge. Mm -hmm. um, we're all busy. We've all got, you know, crazy, crazy schedules. And of course, marketing has to take a second seat to uh, client service. But what marketing does for most professionals is it takes the last seat after everything else that mm -hmm. we do in our business. So by setting up a schedule and setting up goals and setting up an accountability system um, by which we literally would have an editor call them, interview them, and 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 then uh, record that interview, transcribe it, and professionally uh, produce it into a, into a, a, a three to five minute to read blog post. That was where Phone Blogger was formed. So instead of spending four or five or six hours, mm -hmm. you know, fighting over a keyboard trying to write something that made that made sense and editing as as they did, and then dealing with the technology, we did all that for them in a ten minute phone call. So that was Phone Blogger. The next phase was video socials and video socials was born out of our, my um, experience as a president of Toastmasters. Because when I first joined Toastmasters and stood up from did my first speech 35 years ago, I had an anxiety attack and I you know, thought I was going to pass out. And a year later, I was the president of the club and we had launched two other clubs. And I realized that if you could practice in front of a su supportive group of peers, mm -hmm. not just, you know, videographers or professional speech coaches, mm -hmm. et cetera, but actual real people that were doing the same thing you were doing, that that could really make a difference. And, and we took that concept and used it to create video socials. And so you being a member, you know, you know and I know that you're a raving fan of it and you're inviting mm -hmm. people all the time uh, because it makes such a difference for those of us that have that natural resistance and, and and anxiety that comes up when it comes to being on camera. And I know that you know that being on camera is entirely different than standing up in front of an audience. Yes, it so is. We, both, we both had been very accomplished at that before we started video socials and you were one of our one of our first mm -hmm. members. And so I was learning just as just as, as well as you were that just how different it was and, mm -hmm. and, and how you had to imagine that it's a real person on the other side of the camera. Um, that you're having a conversation with. And so we teach you how to do that and it's an experiential, experiential program and we invite you as a guest. It's videosocials.net and just click on the guest the guest button. We, we'd love to have you join. And then beyond that, once you're a little more comfortable in front of the camera, once you've got confidence that you can be in front of the camera, longer form content, conversations with others as Debbie and I are doing now, um, we call it video interview podcast service. And again, we're taking that concept of there's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes to, to produce one of these things, never mind to, to produce it consistently. And most people simply don't have time. Um, and so we provide the vehicles, the processes, the structures, the, the guest intake forms, et cetera, et cetera, and basically do it all for you so that you show up interview your guest, and then everything else is handled for you. And that's our VIP service. So that's videosocials.net forward slash VIP service. And with that, though, I want to come back to, and by the way, guys, there'll be links to 
Debbie's website and LinkedIn profile, et cetera, et cetera. And, and of course, everything to do with video socials or video socials, VIP service, et cetera, all, all associated with however you're consuming this content, whether it be audio or video. Um, and so my last question is, and I think I know the answer based on our conversation so far, but how does how do you work with people so that they never have to diet again? Well, we we talk about lifestyle. So the first 30 days of the program is a diet, as we put it. Everybody's eating this from the same list of foods, real food, turkey, chicken, fish, seafood, vegetables, you know, that fruit. But then after phase one, and we get you to baseline, meaning we get your hormones balanced, you go into phase two. And in phase two, we scientifically add foods back based on your personal preferences and how those foods react to you. So by the time you go through the whole program, then you get to goal and you go into maintenance. By the time you go through the whole program, you know how to eat. You know how to live normally. By the way, you can eat in restaurants from day one. Um, if you can't eat in restaurants, if you can't eat normal food, there's nothing sustainable about it. Right. You know, so we teach you how to bring back all the foods you want to eat which means you just go about and live your life and you're not going from diet to diet, off diet, on diet, off diet, on diet. And you also get rid of that mindset of, well, I ate good today, so I had a good day. Oh, I didn't eat so good today, so I was bad. <laughs> I had a bad day. And it's like, oh my God, I've been there so many times. I, I hear people say it, I was bad. We, you know, it's, we get rid of all of that. So you just live, live like a normal, a thin person who never thought about dieting. They don't think about dieting. They don't judge their day by their food consumption. Um, so that's what we work on. And so it's a, it is a process. It is a journey. Uh, and it's awesome. Absolutely fantastic. So Debbie, I, I just wanted to say I, I was looking forward to this conversation and I'm thrilled to have had you and and thank you for reminding me of what I need to reconnect with, which is what I already know I need to need to be doing and not doing. Um, and and, uh, and I'm going to look into your program uh, a little more because I also know that I need support. Oh, that's and um, you know we, we all need it we we all suck at one level or another of being accountable to ourselves, mm -hmm. right? So um, some of us have, you know, more discipline than others, but the fact of the matter is it, it's, it's when you're trying to make a change, especially a permanent change, having, having somebody to help hold you accountable, to educate you, um, to be there, to be your cheerleader uh, can make a huge difference. And so I know that's the difference that you make. And, and I thank you for it. For those that you're helping and i thank you for choosing to make a difference in the world in that way and i see that you want to add something well i was thinking as you were talking about it the analogy is funny i was thinking how well video socials of course is that same accountability um, if it wasn't for video socials i would not have a library of videos nor would i have and it just dawned on me being a part of video socials, you literally fall in love with the camera. Um, mm. Like I used to be in front of people. Mm. You literally develop that same uh, relationship with the camera, but you also fall in love with the people in your group. Mm. So now you have that and you have the accountability because not only if you don't show up, you don't make a video, you don't get to see these people that you wanna see. So anybody out there listening to me, definitely try video socials. I, Mark knows I could go on and on about just that. But yes, Mark, one of the things that people tell us is it's the accountability and the support. That's what makes a difference. And you're holding me accountable, Deb, and then I'm holding myself accountable. So that's it right there. Outstanding. And um, to mention somebody, I, I know that you had somebody you kind of want to give a shout out to. Uh, who's also a member of Video Socials. So who would that be? Uh, that would be attorney Catherine Miller, um, who I've gotten to know over the last two and a half, 
almost three years, I guess. Uh, and she's in New York, New York City in Westchester, a divorce mediator, and she rocks it. I adore her. And I think she'd be great. She is helping so many people with a time that talk about stress in your life. So um, definitely a shout out to Catherine. Terrific. Well, hopefully she'll, uh, she, I'd love to have her as a guest. Hopefully she'll, uh, she'll come on as a guest because I know that, um, and you can't say this about every divorce attorney, right? No. Um, I, I know that she makes a difference because I've seen her just as I've seen you record dozens and dozens of videos. Um, and, um, and, and, and her practice is about helping people and, 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 and making a difference. And uh, just, just as ours are so. Terrific. Awesome. Well, listen, Debbie, thank you so much. And um, and again, thank you for the difference that you're making. Thank you for, because the difference that we make is what inspires, right? It inspires us. Yep. Inspiration transfers to our clients and their families and their circles of influence. And so, you know, that drop in, drop in the water that creates a ripple across the pond, you make a difference in one person's life, you're making a difference and inspiring that's right. many that's right. others potentially. So um, I know that's what your business is about. That's certainly what we try to make our business about. And um, and the reason why I created the Inspiring Business Podcast. Debbie Harris with Main Street Weight Loss. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. Have a great one. See and you on video socials. Please do. Take care, guys. <laughs>